Hi friends, I'm Chuck and this is my good friend Mark from New York City. And Mark, what are we doing today? So we have been taking uh, the book of Acts and week by week going through it story by story uh, from the disciple makers perspective. And so we are in Acts 15 following the Jerusalem Council. All right, let's go to the scriptures. Okay, so it says, so when they were sent away, they went down to Antioch and having gathered the congregation together, they delivered the letter. When they had read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. Judas and Silas, also being prophets themselves, encouraged and strengthened the brethren with a lengthy message. After they had spent time there, they were sent away from the brethren in peace to those who had sent them out. But it seemed good to Silas to remain there. But Paul and Barnabas stayed in Antioch, teaching and preaching with many others, also the word of the Lord. After some time or some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us return and visit the brethren in every city in which we have proclaimed the word of the Lord and see how they are. Barnabas wanted to take John, called Mark, along with them also. But Paul kept insisting that they should not take him along, who had dis who had deserted uh, them in Pamphylia and not gone with them to the work. And there occurred such a sharp disagreement that they separated from one another, and Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and left, being committed by the brethren to the grace of the Lord. And he was traveling through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. All right. So a little bit of drama. in this <laughs> <laughs> But before we get to all the conflict, there's some great stuff happening right up front. So what do you see? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I see uh, the church together uh, processing through this issue. And um, I think importantly, you see uh, Paul and Barnabas pretty humbly. They've, they've done all this work out, out there and they've uh, submitted uh, the outcome of this to that Jerusalem council. And the church hasn't divided over this issue, but instead um, has come to a unified decision and continued on. So they're delivering that. So, so there's that piece. And then we see uh, these new leaders being introduced of uh, Judas and then Silas, who will factor into this uh, new missionary journey. Yeah, and I find it interesting that discipleship not only comes with mouth-to-ear type of communication, but we're using all kind of mediums in order to disciple people. And this letter mm, becomes yeah. very significant. And, you know, a text, uh, an email, a YouTube video can yep. be very, very crucial in a person's discipleship. So we want to, as disciple makers, look at the mediums that we're using as well. And you do yep. a great job of making YouTube content, and we should put a link in the video description below because you've got some great stuff on your channel. So. Like you said, yeah, getting the word out. Amen. Amen. Uh, what I love here too, Chuck, I love that uh, that Silas is, um, he, he's really serving. He's serving the church and serving people. And then that, uh, that use of his gift just makes space for him. And uh, then he's, Paul sees this and uh, brings him into the team. But it comes from, he served well in Jerusalem. They send him on up to Antioch, and then he's continuing to serve there and use the gift that he has, and then that makes space for, uh, for what for Paul seeing that, and then using inviting him into the the team as he uh, continues on. So I think Silas is one of the heroes of this little passage right here to point out uh, the way Silas handled himself, and as a disciple maker, pointing to the fact that it's our job to just to serve, and then let let that uh, make space for more. Yeah, and I think we've mentioned this before, but the idea of sending our best, you mm, know, yeah, and it's it's a sacrifice to the church in Jerusalem to send Silas and these other guys as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, as disciple makers, we need to have open hands 
and yeah. be willing to serve, like you said, in such a way that we're sending our best. So yeah. I like that about Silas. So, all right. Amen. So what else? I think we're getting into the juicy part here. <laughs> yeah. So then uh, Paul and uh, Paul initiates with Barnabas to go back. And um, you bring this in a lot, Chuck, from Psalm, or Proverbs 27, uh, knowing the state of your flock. So he's he mm -hmm. uh, he's going back to the uh, the towns that they've been in. And seems like he's going back to kind of check on how things are going. So there's that example for us to follow in making sure we know what's going on. Uh, but then there comes this conflict there as they're deciding who to take along for that. And um, conflict ensues and the team uh, divides or multiplies, depending on your perspective. Yeah. So as a disciple maker, you've never had conflict with a teammate, right? You know, uh, I think I, uh, to the contrary, I can't remember a time when I have it, Chuck. <laughs> exactly. I I think conflict resolution is, if it's not short-term discipleship uh, criteria, it needs to be at the front of our long-term discipleship uh, plan because, man, alive, we just, we are uh, prone to conflict. And yes. so if, you know, I think of Jesus in Matthew 18, you know, he gives, gives us good conflict resolution plan, but yeah, uh, we need to practice that and disciple that into the people that we're helping. So, yeah. Yeah. So I've heard one perspective on this too. I, I know you've got a perspective here on uh, Paul and <laughs> where he's at, but um, I, I heard actually recently somebody say, you know, it's, it's uh, it, they just had some different uh, cr criteria for who, who and how they were recruiting to their team. What's your perspective here on what happened with Barnabas and Paul, Chuck? Yeah, I think what you just said is the safest place the land but i i do have a question for paul when i see him in heaven mm -hmm. I, i'm gonna ask him now barnabas was your advocate with the rest of the church yeah why when barnabas is mark's advocate why didn't you go with it you know yeah so it, it's kind of like if it's been done for me, I ought to allow it to be done for others. That's yep. my shepherding heart coming out, you know, and that's Barnabas. He was a shepherd, you know. Yeah. So yep. anything to add to that? You know, I think the only other thing I would add is uh, th that I think um, I've heard another uh, perspective, I think, forced onto this. Uh, and then I'll hear your perspective on this. But that uh, but that this is that this almost is a picture of normative, like leveling up of leaders and that there's mm -hmm. always going to be conflict. Um, and then that's that's the context in which those leaders will be released. And I just yeah, I see that that happens. I'm not sure if I would buy into the reality that that is that this is the blueprint in a positive way yeah, yeah. that this can happen. Yeah. But I'm not necessarily bought in like this is how it's always going to happen. And anytime this happens, it's a healthy picture of multiplication. Yeah, I, I I'm not sure that we should uh, design conflict into the discipleship plan in order to you know, uh, multiply missionary bands, you know, right. Uh, I don't, I don't think that's by design, but the reality is more often than not, yeah. what ends up multiplying is conflict. And uh, so, uh, reality, but not necessarily my desire, uh, yeah. uh, nor do I think it's Jesus's desire for that to happen so yeah that's uh it, it's very unfortunate but like you said it's a reality so yeah 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 
I call that the big bull syndrome. You want to explain the big bull this syndrome or uh, syndrome to our fellow disciple makers? Well, yeah, I could take a stab. I think when when you say that, you're saying this idea that uh, that that big bull uh, that uh, apostolic leader as they're get as they're going out and they're doing work, they may find others that they can bring along with them that. Uh, smaller, younger bull, whatever you want to say. And then there hits a point where um, that younger bull begins to mature and they begin to lock horns. And um, <laughs> it's like, okay, it's time to, <laughs> it's time to give you some space yeah. and um, yeah, let them, let them get at it. So yeah, uh, I think that's what you're saying is happening here in a sense. And I think that as a disciple maker, that is very important to recognize and maybe this will preempt conflict to realize that people are growing up. They're, yeah. they're, they're becoming their own man or woman. And that's exactly what we want. We want them looking to Jesus versus us and taking their marching orders straight from him. And that can create conflict. So when we see that coming, hey, you know what? It's time to send you, you know, yep. yeah. or it's time for me to leave one or the other, you know. So that's good. Any last words on this? I think the last thing I'd highlight, Chuck, is that it does seem like Paul learned a lesson from Barnabas. Uh, it seems like he was off doing his own thing in Syria, the best we know. Um, and then Barnabas brings him into Antioch. He takes him on the journey. He brings along John Mark, and now uh, Paul has learned from that example, and he's bringing along Silas. So he's bringing along another guy that he can pour into, and then he finds Timothy as well, which we'll see as we continue on. But he's learned that lesson of starting yeah. to learn how to raise up leaders as he goes. Yeah, and we have strong evidence that Paul and Mark reconcile later on. So yeah. good news. Yeah. All right. So we love you, God bless you, and until next time, keep making disciples of Jesus.